I recently uploaded a video to my short form content talking about a goldfish that had swim bladder issues. And something that became apparent to me is that a lot of people really know jack squat when it comes to swim bladder. Or they have extremely basic surface level knowledge of how to deal with swim bladder issues like feeding peas which is the kind of information you would get on online forums filled with opinion pieces i started studying the natural world when i was 17 years old in college we learned about things such as biology zoology ichthyology to put that in layman's terms i studied critters critter guts and fishies. Now we did study a bunch of other things as well, such as entomology, botany, geology, which is kind of uh, irrelevant to fish farming. Though I guess, you know, knowing a bit about bugs and, you know, the dirt in the mud pond can be useful. What my job basically consisted of was looking at a bunch of scientific research, condensing it and explaining it more simply to tourists. On top of that, I didn't jump into farming fish two days ago. I've been farming carp, koi, specifically, for 10 years. I kind of know what I'm talking about. Obviously, even though I have all of these qualifications behind me, people shouldn't just blindly accept whatever an expert has to say. Obviously, people should question experts. What I am saying is, because of my pedigree, maybe my information is worth considering. You guys can enjoy some videos on fish I'm going to put in this video uh, while I'm speaking about this issue. Buoyancy issues in fish because of the swim bladder could be because of a variety of different factors. One of the reasons a fish can have swim bladder issues is because of constipation. And a lot of people will say, oh, you should feed peas. That is literally three quarters of the solution. It works. There's a better way. What I do is I boil the peas first. I cook them, whatever. Then I blend them up. It's better if you remove the skins, but if they are blended fine enough, it doesn't matter. You just don't want the skin of the pea to get stuck in the fish's mouth. Then you take some ginger powder. That also works as a laxative. You combine everything and add some xanthan gum in order to make little blobs that you then go and feed to your fish. In this way, you will be confident in knowing that your fish ingested what it needs to ingest, something that becomes difficult if the fish doesn't want to eat at all. Secondly, could be a bacterial infection. Feeding peas isn't going to work in this instance, in which case something like salt or vircon S should sort that out. Now, you cannot really look at a normal bodied fish and compare to a fancy goldfish. The reason why fancy goldfish are more predisposed to swim bladder issues is because their bodies are more compacted. There is a chance that this will happen again and again and again. And even if you cure a fancy goldfish once, you'll have to monitor your fish and if this is a continual problem, it's gonna be better euthanizing the fish. On my farm, I have had like two issues with swim bladder disease. Referring to his current stock, over the past seven months, one import from Asia, one pet shop purchase, two as of the making of this video. Even though fancy goldfish are more predisposed to swim bladder disease, it should not be a regular occurrence because then something else is wrong. If you are constantly having issues with swim bladder disease, that could be a sign that either you are not feeding the correct kind of food or your feeding regime is not correct. Could also be that it's from a shit breeder that didn't look after his genetics. Assuming a fish has buoyancy issues because of indigestion, the mixture that I mentioned will help for that. Assuming it's a bacterial issue, salt or burkon will work for that. If it is genetic, there's nothing you can do. Sometimes fish just have an issue biologically and then it's just better to end them off the bat. One of my goals as a proper fish breeder is to select animals that are as hardy as possible. So I will never breed with an animal that has swim bladder issues. Working with fancy goldfish, knowing that everything is correct the way it should be, having years of experience, I am very quickly able to tell when buoyancy issues is just beyond repair. And it is better to euthanize that fish because I am not going to keep an animal alive that is constantly going to have bouts with swim bladder disease because that's no way to live. 
And then secondly, I'm not going to keep it alive because of some sort of emotional connection because I cannot feed an animal indefinitely that's not producing. And those genetics, I don't want anyway. I'm not a backyard breeder. I strive not only for artistically correct fish, but genetic superiority, which sets me apart from a lot of breeders in this country. I want to make sure that my bloodlines are correct so that my animals have proper, long, healthy lives and that the customers who buy them are happy at the end of the day.